In this video, we're going to look at a couple special cases for factoring. Um, I am never one to encourage people to memorize different patterns. Um, but if you're watching this, you're probably looking, uh, or you've probably done a lot of factoring and you're looking at ways to maybe find some shortcuts. And if you start to recognize this through repetitive patterns and you start to coming to these conclusions after you've, uh, after you've done some, some factoring, then cool. But, uh, I I'm, I'm really hesitant on, on saying memorize these because I don't think it's a, it's necessarily a good, uh, way to do that. Um, but I would like to just talk about how you might be able to factor some of these things. Um, and then maybe some patterns that you could look for. Um, but you know, there's going to be, there's going to be little things that, that you might trip you up. So you should always look to see if you can factor it using, uh, our splitting the middle term. So speaking of which, um, we know we can probably notice in these first two, uh, we are missing a, our middle term. We've only got two uh, numbers in our uh, quadratic here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in that missing x term that we're, we don't see. And notice I didn't change anything. If I, I get zero times x is nothing, so it would go away. So I'm just left with x squared minus four. Uh, so I'm, I'm basically not changing anything. And I'm still going to look at the same method of what is one times negative four. That's negative four which numbers multiply to get negative four that add together to get zero. So I've got one and negative four, negative one and positive four, two and negative two, aha, two plus a negative two is gonna give me zero. So I'm gonna split my middle term into positive two and negative two. So one X squared plus two X minus two X minus four. Now, just like always, I'm going to look to see what's common between each of these two terms. X is common in the first one. X plus 2 is what remains. Uh, minus 2 is what's common in the second one. X plus 2 is what remains. These two things are the same, so I know I've done the right thing, and I'm left with X minus 2 and X plus 2. Let's see if this next one works out in a similar way. Let's put in our zero X in here. So we got nine X squared plus zero X minus one. We're gonna to look to see what numbers multiply together to give me uh, nine times negative one, uh, which will give me negative nine. Nine times negative one is negative nine. Which numbers multiply together to get negative nine that add together to get zero. All right, so we, again, we have negative one and nine uh, we've got one and negative nine. We've got three and negative three. Aha. Okay. Here's our values that add up to zero. So again, split the middle term. So nine X squared plus three X minus three X minus one. What's common between the first two terms? What's common between the second two terms? I've got uh, three X for the first one. And I'm left with, this one might take a little bit more thinking, 3x times what gives me 3x squared? Okay, that's gonna, or 9x squared, that's gonna be 3x. 3x times what gives me positive 3x? Uh, it's gonna be positive one. Okay, so then in the next one, I've got a minus one out here, because there's nothing really, right? There's It's just a, a negative and a negative, so I'm just gonna pull a negative one out, and that's gonna leave me with inside here, 3x plus one. So negative one times three X, yep. Negative one times one, yep. So I'm left with three X plus one and three X minus one. So you notice in both of these, we have the same exact binomial, but one's a, po one's a negative and one's a positive. One's a positive, one's a negative. These things are called the difference of two squares. And the difference of two squares means just what it sounds like. We've got a difference of two squared numbers. X times X, two times two. The difference, oops, sorry, the difference of nine X squared, three X and three X, and one, one times one. So the difference of two squares basically says, if you take the square root of your first term and the square root of your second, uh, your second term, and you put a plus and minus in between those, you've got that thing factored. 
Square root of 9x squared, 3x. Boom, boom. Square root of 1. Ah, that's going to be 1. Don't, don't. Put a plus and a minus in there, and you've got those things factored. That's how the difference of two squares works. Um, let's look at the second set. Uh, the first one, okay, so again, we're going to split the middle term, and we're going to find our common values. So we've got 1 times 9 equals 9. What things multiply together to get me 9? Uh, and I've got 3 and 3. Okay, 3 plus 3 is going to give me 6, so I'm going to split this into 3x and 3x, right? Carry down my x squared, carry down my 9. What's common between these two? What's common between these two? I've got, uh, excuse me, I've got uh, x common in the first bit, and then I've got x plus 3 remaining. I've got uh, 3 here. 3 times something gives me 3x. 3 times something gives me 9. So I'm going to be left with 3 times what gives me 3x. 3 times what gives me 9. These two things are the same, so I know I'm doing the right thing here. So I've got x plus 3, and I have x plus 3. Okay, well, that's that's interesting. You can probably figure out where this next one might be going as well, but look at this. We've got two of the same things. Um, this, uh, let's, let's go through the same process. I'm going to first look at, is there anything common between all three terms? No. So I'm going to take 4 times 25, which is 100. Which values multiply together to give me 20, uh, 100 that add together to give me negative 20? So if I'm looking at adding things together to get a negative, um, and I'm multiplying to get a positive 100, that means I'm going to have two negative numbers. I'm going to have a negative times a negative. Because if I have a positive and a positive, I'm not going to get to a negative value here when I add them together. So I'm just going to look at all of my negative numbers. So I got negative 1 and negative 100, no. Negative 2 and negative 50, still no. Negative 3 and uh, negative 3 does not go evenly into 100. Uh, negative 4 and negative 25, no. Uh, negative 5 and negative 20. Uh, we're getting closer. Uh, well, sort of. That's 25. Um, negative 6 doesn't go in evenly. Negative 7 doesn't go in evenly. Negative 8, negative 9, which leaves us with uh, negative 10 and negative 10. Okay, and those actually add together to give me 20. All right, so negative 10x minus 10x plus 25. Carry down my 4x squared. So what is common now, again, between my first two? Uh, if I look at that, I've got, they're both even and they both have an x. So I'm going to say 2x is what I'm going to say. 2x and what's left? 2x times what gives me 4x squared? That's going to be 2x. 2x times what's going to give me negative 10x? Uh, it's going to be minus 5. Over here, what's common between these two? Uh, let's see. I've got 10 and 25, so it looks like a, a 5. And let's see, 5 times, is that going to be a positive or negative? I think that's going to be a negative. So if I factor out a negative value, negative 5 times 10 is, uh, whoops, sorry, we need the parentheses. Negative 5 times what gives me negative 10x? 2x. Negative 5 times what can give me positive 25? Minus 5. Okay, so there we go. So now we've got the same thing again. 2x minus 5 and... 2x minus 5. These are called perfect square trinomials. These are called perfect, perfect square trinomials. And perfect square trinomials uh, can be found by kind of analyzing, because they're perfect square because we've got x plus 3 times x plus 3. So we would end up with x plus 3 squared. We'd end up here with 2x minus 5 squared. So that's why they're called perfect square trinomials. And the way that you can really recognize this 
is if you break this down, this is going to be um, this is going to be a. You're going to take the square root of this, two x. You're going to take the square root of this, five, and then this is going to be two a b. So if we consider if we consider our um, here, let me scroll up a little bit here. If we consider uh, our trinomial to be uh, ax squared plus bx plus c, then this is going to factor into, sorry, let me go the other way. Let me go the other way. It'll be easier to go the other way. If we have uh, a plus b squared. Now, this thing could be anything, right? This could be 2x. This could be just x. But if we've got this, then we're going to have a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And this works with a minus as well, a minus b squared. Now, notice this is not, uh, not what we have up here because it's not a difference of two squares. You, you, don't, you don't just drop these two things in there, but you're going to have, or have a squared minus b squared. You're going to have a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. Work it out. Try, try this. Do an a plus b times a plus b. Do an a minus b times a minus b using area model, distributed property, whatever you like, but confirm that these two things are indeed the same. But if you notice here, uh, what's happening is we've got double of this thing times this thing. We've got a double of the, this thing times this thing, the A and the B. So if I'm looking here, if I'm trying to break this down, here I've got the square root of A. So uh, let's let's look at this. Uh, let's look at our 4x squared minus 20x plus 25. I'm going to take the square root of this. Okay, that's going to be 2x. I'm going to take the square root of this. That's going to be five uh it's going to be five and then how do i recognize I, okay so i've noticed now these two things are both perfect squares if this is two times four x times five sorry times two x times five then i'm good so the square root of this is two x the square root of this is five two times five times two x gives me 20. And the only difference, the only thing I have to do here is add this minus here. So, um, you know, like I said, it, it's a little bit trickier. This one might be a little bit easier to see. Maybe it's a little bit harder with the leading coefficient of A. But this one might be a little bit easier to see that 6 is 3. Like this is 3 squared and this is 3 times 2. So it's doubled. So it's a little bit easier to see here than it might be to see down here. But um, that is the difference, uh, or sorry, that's the perfect square trinomials. That is the difference of two squares. Um, and like I said, even with these, it's often a good idea to just work through your factoring and your splitting of, of two terms or splitting of the middle term. That is always the best way to go.